we are setting off on an African adventure. Our destination is the famous Serengeti. We are taking you along on the greatest animal migration in the world, when millions of wildebeest make the long journey from Tanzania to Kenya. It's a journey into the unknown. On their odyssey, the wildebeest will meet very different neighbours. There are also some spotted and striped travelling companions on this 1,000 kilometre march. Unfortunately, not all travel acquaintances mean well. Those who get separated from the group are particularly vulnerable. We suddenly realise something else that we're going to experience on this trip the great wildebeest migration is representative of the merciless cycle of life and death. But as yet, everything is peaceful. That's why the plane has turned into a playground for the 200,000 migrating zebras. Sometimes, zebras and lions even think alike. Lions mate up to 40 times a day, so we take the opportunity to fortify ourselves. Hmm, pasta alla Tanzania. Instead of seasoning our meal with pepper, the wind gives it a good sprinkling of dust. We're not the only ones enjoying a spot of lunch. The vultures always manage to find plenty of food during the wildebeest migration. Next door, it looks like the hyenas are enjoying a cosy siesta. But hyenas should never be underestimated. Even though it can seem that butter wouldn't melt in their mouths, their bad reputation is not unjustified. Ooh. 
a clear signal. It's time for the wildebeest to move on. And we're staying with them. The herd stretches out to maybe 40 kilometers in length. For many young animals, it's a first test of strength. The destination for this stage of the trek is a dusty riverbank. That's where the wildebeest want to cross the river. But there's a problem. The river is occupied. Although hippopotamuses are vegetarians, they are incredibly heavy, so it's a better idea to wait until the swimming pool is free again. At last. The herd immediately gets going. There's no time to lose. While the first animals have found a soft spot from which to leap into the water, the bulk of the animals are heading towards the steep banks. This young animal was unable to keep up and has become separated from the group. Tired, it steps into the mud to cross the water. Where are the others? The herd doesn't wait for stragglers. This young animal only has one chance. It has to reach the other bank where the other wildebeest have already arrived. Sometimes life can be cruel. made it. That was close.
The giraffes noticed nothing of this drama, even though their long necks allow them to see far across the Serengeti. But at the moment, they're enjoying their meal of acacias. It gets dark from one minute to the next in the Serengeti. It's the time the hunters come out. We're glad to reach our lodge in time. In the light of the new day, it becomes clear that the killers of the savannah have struck again. Meanwhile, the lappet-faced vulture is considering which table he should dine at today. Two of its relatives are already waiting, as is a jackal. They're all hoping the hyena will share for once, but they're out of luck. What's the Lion King doing today? He is battling flies. In the 80s, the fly plague had decimated the lion population to a few dozen animals. But now the number of lions in the Serengeti has increased again, although they still suffer dreadfully. This is recycling Serengeti style. One animal's waste is a dung beetle's banquet. Meanwhile, the wildebeest herd is loudly setting off again. The animals always follow the same ancient rhythm. They instinctively set off on the laborious path to their next stop, the birthing plane. The animal's pilgrimage is about to undergo its first big highlight, one we definitely don't want to miss. Male has a big one, which means it's easier to know that it's male. Mm. Female has the, not that one. Smaller one, one yeah. yeah. That's correct, yeah. I see that. Yeah, under the neck.
The birthing plane is the only place the wildebeest spend any length of time. Then the Serengeti is transformed into a delivery ward for three weeks. 8,000 calves are born here every day. But it's not all plain sailing. Wildebeest giving birth for the first time often associate their offspring with pain and won't let them feed as a result. In that case, the young calf doesn't stand a chance. If it gets accepted by the herd, it still has to make sure it doesn't get trampled on. Who is watching who here? We're greeting a very fresh member of the herd. It's always difficult at first. The birthing plane seems to have an invigorating effect on other animals too. This ostrich has a testosterone rush that has turned him quite red. He probably doesn't know yet that he will have to pay a lot in maintenance. A few bushes down, the cheetah family are napping to help them digest. But even though their stomachs are full to the brim, there's no harm in keeping an eye open for seconds. These potential seconds consist of a sizeable herd of Thompson's gazelles. The young bucks are testing their strength for the first time. The herd is in luck. The cheetahs are too full up to be really interested. That's why this gazelle is feeling pretty safe with her young. But she isn't. This hyena would just love to destroy the idyll.
The mother senses that something is amiss and flees. The hyena is looking for its prey, but that's not so easy. Although the fawn is all on its own now, it doesn't yet have its own smell. Will the mother's tactic work? Luckily, the trick was successful. The enemies weren't able to find the young gazelle. Frustrated, the hyena wanders off. And now that the coast really is clear, the mother and her young can set off for the protection of the herd. Let's toast to that. Yeah, it's Robert Son Shiraz from South Africa. We're happy everything went well this time and enjoy a pleasant end to the day. The next day, the herd set off very early, led by the restless zebras. Evidently, they are early risers. The wildebeest have left the birthing plain behind and are heading towards their next destination in northern Tanzania. It's a tranquil lake that is the attraction for more than 8 million hooves. Here, the thirsty animals can have a good drink without worrying about dangerous predators. We too are enjoying this oasis. The lake has something for everyone, whether loners or more sociable types. Of course, the elephants also appreciate this peaceful place. To make sure the lush grass doesn't go straight on their hips, the animals go power walking around the lake. The normally hectic impalas are in a very relaxed mood.
Well, not all of them. Buffaloes can't really cope with such rushing around. It seems as if nothing could cloud this picture of paradise. Even the lions are surprisingly peaceful here. What would befit such a lovely spot better than a happy song? You can play with your little finger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How did it go again? <laughs> but then cracks start to appear in this paradise. A storm brews up overnight. When it finally stops raining, we set off in search of the wildebeest herd again. It has withdrawn a little, and they've picked up some dangerous followers. Wild dogs. Agitated, the herd splinters apart because the dogs are starting a hunt. In the end, the pack comes out on top. We retreat and get stuck in the mud. And to make matters worse, the next downpour has arrived. A bad day is coming to an end. The next day, the bad patch is over. Paradise is back. After the rain, the animals regain their joie de vivre and the flora explodes into colour. By the way, blue signs of manhood amongst Guinons stands for particularly active individuals. Active like this.
Nevertheless, the time has come for the wildebeest to leave this beautiful spot because the way to Kenya is long. The animals now face the most dangerous section of their migration. There is a tricky river behind this forest clearing. They have to cross it. When we approach, we're greeted by a hostile reception committee. Even so, at first glance, the river seems very pleasant. Waterbuck have found a home here. As have tortoises. And an entire family of geese seems to be living in the neighborhood. Not to mention Mr. and Mrs. Baboon. But something isn't right here. Crocodiles are the true kings of the river, and almost every animal has to come here to drink. The two giraffes look around nervously, which is just as well. The giraffes can sense the enemy doesn't sleep. But their thirst is greater than their fear. Maybe the crocodiles are waiting for easier prey, but they're definitely hungry because they've already killed one giraffe. Now the first wildebeest have reached the river successfully. They're expected. The inimitable warning cry of the hammercop announces the impending danger. Even the fat monitor lizard thinks it's better to get away. A second attempt.
Although the crocodiles are patrolling, they aren't attacking. Not this time. We also need a break, here at the river that looks so harmless. The next morning starts with a surprise. There are evidently animals who are quite unperturbed by the crocodiles in the water. The sleepy baby hippo can't see who is coming up behind it, but the crocodile has already got its target in its sights. Finally, the young hippopotamus has recognized the danger. The family are outraged. Back to the wildebeest. Fear is written over the wildebeest's faces as the crocodiles get into position. Crocodiles want to live too. Afterwards, it brings the prize to the safety of the pool that serves the crocodiles as a larder. Meanwhile, our herd are gathering for their big performance. And what a performance it is. It's called the Revenge of the Wildebeest. The silence that follows is almost eerie.
The wildebeest have made it. Together, they have defeated the enemy. They have left the Ungorongoro crater behind. Ahead of them is Kenya, the wildebeest's promised land. The wildebeest will spend the next few months on the fertile plateau. Only when the dry season reaches Kenya will the animals return to Tanzania. Then they will have to go on the dusty, thirsty trek all over again, just the other way round. And then the wildebeest will meet their old acquaintances again. But for us, it's time to say goodbye. <laughs> the only question that remains is, who do the wildebeest belong to? Kenya or Tanzania? But that's a different story. <laughs>